This is a Music Therapy Chronicles podcast interview with Christina Twilt. And I went into I went into therapy and I started to meditate. I did some soul searching and slowly I started to remember, oh right, music. Music, music. I, I love music. And um, through therapy I did a um, one of those career personality tests and physical, you know, physiotherapy and occupational therapy were in there. Um, it was a kind of an older test, so music therapy wasn't in there. But my therapist said, you know, like, like I, she acknowledged that, like, you know, like it's it's an older test, but I think because music is a part for you, I said she you know, she thought I think music therapy might be this thing, and I was like, what is? music therapy that that sounds too good to be true what like <laughs> you're listening to the music therapy chronicles a podcast about music therapy from a variety of perspectives our ambition is to inspire and connect listeners through meaningful conversations just like a music therapy conference you can listen to anywhere. My name is Trisha Kayati. I'm your weekly host and a board-certified music therapist from the New England region. If you're enjoying the show, please subscribe so you never miss an episode and consider leaving us a rating and review. We really appreciate them. You can find more podcast episodes, links to our pod courses, the self-care community, links to all of our social media, and get on our monthly newsletter, all at musictherapychronicles.com. Thank you so much for choosing to listen to this show today, and you can always reach me by sending an email to hello at musictherapychronicles.com. Welcome back to the Music Therapy Chronicles. Thank you so much for being here today and choosing to spend your time listening to this episode, which is part one of my conversation with Christina. We dive into how and why she found music therapy, the journey she went on to make this career shift and redefine success. Um, looking at the word should and thinking about where her passions lie versus where her logical brain told her to go uh, specifically for career. So throughout this conversation, Christina is just so open and honest about what she experienced in different aspects of her life from career to relationship to her um, like the dichotomy she experienced having a career in technology and computer science versus looking at music, finding ways to bridge the two and differences, similarities and differences on in those two career paths. So this is an amazing episode for anyone who is experiencing any transition, I think, in life to just have that validation about, you know, what what you might be experiencing and what you might be going through and kind of rolling with it over time and trusting the process and following your gut instinct. And I also think this is an especially great episode for someone thinking about joining the music therapy field, newly discovering that music therapy exists and could be a viable career option based on your talents and strengths and passions and preferences, and also for any new or aspiring professionals who Maybe you're also feeling like a little unsure, a little confused. Um, Yeah, so as always, great episode for anyone, but especially anyone also going through a career shift, also new to this music therapy thing or experiencing some other transition in life where can feel a little bit dodgy, (laughs) a little bit confusing and overwhelming. And sometimes you second guess yourself. So like I said, this is part one of this conversation. Part two will be out next week. And... I say it in the recording, but Christina brings me out of the spiritual closet, guys. (laughs) So if you want to hear us talk about metaphysics a little bit, um, the, the bridge of the gap between science and music, as well as 
the music therapy experience as a clinician from like a very soul oriented viewpoint, then definitely listen or definitely subscribe to the show so you don't miss that show that episode next week. Getting a little tongue tied here. All right. So that means it's time to get into this episode. Please enjoy part one of my conversation with Christina. Welcome to the Music Therapy Chronicles. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Trisha. <laughs> thank you for um, having the guts to reach out and to want to share your thoughts. I I think that is an important thing to note for anyone listening who's like on the fence. Um, li- literally reach out to me. <laughs> I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being so gracious when I reached out. It was one of those things where I've been thinking about it for months, if not probably like at least a year. And I thought, oh, maybe maybe but oh i'm too nervous all oh, these people that are on the podcast are so like amazing and so important sounding but <laughs> it, when i you know when i heard that that call to be like do not be intimidated if you if you are feeling intimidated don't be intimidated that was the that was the thing that got me to send that email finally and i'm so glad that i did i'm excited <laughs> Thank you. I, I can totally relate to that cuz even after doing this for several years um avid listeners of the show will know that this year I've released many more solo episodes and like that was a huge hurdle for me to jump over so if you're like if you think I don't feel that same intimidation and imposter syndrome you're wrong I do feel it so I I honor that and I appreciate that you um got outside your comfort zone so thank you (laughs) oh thank you so much for having me this is so great I'm so excited (laughs) cool so tell the listeners a little bit about yourself Christina Okay, so um, I am a 33-year-old uh, cis European woman, um, grew up in Canada. My uh, music therapy degree is not my first bachelor's degree. So um, I grew up, like my earliest memories were a mix of both um, music, singing and dancing, as well as Um, fiddling around with technology. I remember figuring out how to use the cassette player to record um, uh, Once Upon a December from Anastasia and recording it and um, listening back to it over and over and over again. Um, So I've always um, been kind of interested in technology. We had video game systems growing up, so I played played some Nintendo, a good amount of Nintendo uh, for the Super NES growing up. Anyway, so I am um, in Toronto. I am a newly certified music therapist. I graduated in September of 2021 and I got certified in 2022. So I am one of the lucky cohort that had their uh, schooling very much impacted by COVID. And so um, part of my placement had to be done online very, Un- unexpectedly. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to do my internship in person at uh, Holland Bloorview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital in Toronto. Um, but yeah, so gosh, what else is there about me? Um, I love swing dancing is a thing that, we'll, that we will get to talk about at the end, I'm sure. And um, yeah, I'm just kind of a, a bit of an eclectic person, I suppose. Um, I have gotten into cross-stitching recently and um, gosh, yeah, what else is there? I feel like I had more that I wanted to say, but I think that's okay. <laughs> I'm sure more tidbits will come out, but that that gives us a really good picture of like who you are and the background you're coming from. Um, so let's dive into that more because you mentioned music therapy was not like your first career path. So what brought you here and like where... Um, I want to say, where did that start? But I mean, like even pre pre music therapy, you know? Yeah, that definitely is a thing that has to, it has to kind of go back to the beginning. So as I mentioned, I've always been a musical kid. Um, Growing up, my mom put me and my sisters in dance classes and we loved it, had a ball. Um, I took, I had asked actually for quite, I remember asking for a few years to take piano lessons before my parents finally said, okay, yes, yes, we think that she has the discipline to sort of, um, to dig into it. And um, 
So I took piano, um, started in grade four, and I remember being very proud that, oh, Christina doesn't need to do the, the children's beginners book. She can just go right into the learning adult piano books because she's so, <laughs> she's so special or whatever. Um, so I had been involved in choirs and in bands um, quite enthusiastically from elementary school to high school. But when it came time to pick my career, I thought, okay, um, I had kind of listened to the predominant um, messaging that, you know, music is great, but it's not a stall. It's not a stable career choice. It's not a lucrative mm. one. It's, you know, you won't be quote unquote successful if you go into music. So I thought, okay, well, I also love computers. I love computer science. I remember, um, some of my fondest memories with my dad were taking apart computers. My Both of my parents are actually in the computer science degree. They worked in, um, or they, they don't have computer science degrees, I should correct that. Um, one of them has, one of them has a, um, a Bachelor of Arts, I believe, but they both worked at the University of Toronto in very tech related fields. Um, mm -hmm. So I like computers and stuff was just growing up in the home. So I, I, I loved it and I figured, all right i one of the, one of the things that one of the defining moments i guess of who i am as a person was i took an intro to computer science class and the first assignment i can't remember what that first assignment was um but it was you know like program something something simple something really you know like it, it might have been you know um, point, um making the computer say hello world for all i know that's that's a that's a really common thing to do like when you're first learning something and i got i stayed up all night like not all night i i i have historically been a person that needs a strict deadline so like okay 10 o'clock like it's time to go to bed but i got so sucked into the zone and i had there was no passage of time um and I, oh yeah, that was what I, that was what I wanted to say in my, in my intro was I am, I suspect that I am an ADHD -er. I am um, trying to figure out this whole um, uh, diagnosis um, whirlpool and stuff. And it's a little bit confusing. And mm -hmm. um, anyway, so looking back on it, I wonder, oh, was I experiencing hyperfocus with that? uh with yeah. that assignment because you know all of a sudden I looked up at the clock and I was like how is it two in the morning and I am <laughs> not tired I am just so <laughs> invested in this and I figured well I remember thinking at that point well if if I am able to spend so much time working on this thing and just being in love with it and not have any concept of time literally to the point where I don't have to go to bed then I guess this is what I need to do and so mm -hmm. I sort of went into computer science with that and I still don't regret it. I, it's, um, because I love, I, you know, I love techie things and I love getting to, at that time also, I filled my course load with science things as well. So there was, I always made sure to have at least one music course. One thing that I wish that I could have gotten to do was to do musical theater in high school that was one of the things that my friends had done and i felt like i kind of missed on the sidelines but also i got to learn about chemistry i got to learn about biology physics mm, i guess i you know i i it's it's this weird thing of like how can numbers apply to the real world that i it, it, it didn't seem i mean i i was good at it in the sense that it's math and i enjoy math I you know like I like I there's the set structure that I can follow and I can figure that out um but yeah so I went in and I got a computer science degree from uh it was formerly at that time it was called the University of Ontario Institute of Technology now it is renamed to Ontario Tech U and um while I was there so UOIT shares a campus with Durham College and when I was there I met my husband um so we were we started dating shortly after we uh shortly after I graduated he his was a three-year program mine was a four-year um so all oh, right I skipped a part I skipped a part <laughs> 
<laughs> one thing, one thing I will say, um, I, I, um, the, my computer science degree was, was challenging. It was, um, we started off it. So it was a very small university. Um, it still, it still is small. It was, it was pretty new at the time. Um, we, the, when I went in computer science, the first, you know, intro to computer science course in that first year was, um, had a hundred people in it and my graduating class had only eight. So that wow. gives, <laughs> it was, um, it was, there were some really, really challenging courses, um, linear algebra and compilers. Like if, if you, if you kind of like to still com like computers down to like how li literally the process of the words that I am using to program, to tell the computer what to do, the computer doesn't just understand those words. It has to break down and dissect and understand what the human means and translate it to computer language mm -hmm. so that the computer can then do the computer things that it needs to do. There's really challenging courses. <laughs> um, so, and I, one of the other things that I kind of consider a, for a forming, what is that the word? Um, a cornerstone part of my journey is I remember um, so my program, um, it was special because it was a bachelor's program, but we did also have a thesis component to it. So that's where the honors mm -hmm. bachelor's comes in. And I remember my favorite professor saying, you know, like when it comes down to this thing, to this thesis, do what you're really passionate about. And I remember thinking, well, that's silly. That's BS. Like I'm passionate about music. There is no way that I can put music into it. I, I figured out how to incorporate music in one of my other um, classes in my um, human computer interaction course, um, which is basically like, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's what it sounds like. Like, how do we as humans interact with computers? Like, do we touch buttons basically? And like the placement of buttons and the colors of things and how do we organize um, menus so that it's, easy for people to figure out where to go and mm -hmm. i took a very very left-handed approach and there was a study oh my gosh i wish i had i wish i could look up the study but it was something along the lines of there was this cave in france it was an art installation and the cave had um different um glowing um computerized eggs so each egg had a glowing um color to it you know reds and greens and blues and yellows and stuff and they were harmonized with each other so if you they i wish i could remember more but it was like they they were if you i think it was something like if you got close to it then if you got close to one of the eggs then you would hear the tone and then the, and then those tones would resonate with the other eggs and make the other eggs light up and so i did a project where i was like kind of like you know, like reiterating like the human computer interaction part of this art installation and the resonance that happened and the the tones that happened. And I remember getting a lot of very strange looks in that class and just being, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> um, but yeah, so when it came to do the thesis of just do what you're passionate about music, I was like, no, there's, I could not think of a way. I honestly could not. I. I, I did the, you know, once again, I did the quote unquote safe and stable thing. And um, I charged ahead with a thesis that I really did not like the idea of. Um, I mm. tortured myself with it. I, you know, again, I look back, oh, was this ADHD when I like epically, epically, epically procrastinated? I literally wrote the whole thing in three days. <laughs> Wow. And and I could only do that because I was, you know, I had my mom sitting beside me, um, gracious, loving, general soul that she is, generous soul that she is, and, you know, like, just helped me through it. And um, I, it, it was, it was hard. It was hard. Um, so I graduated. I was very lucky to find a website development job in uh, my hometown. And I worked there and looking back, I think I was about done um, at the six month mark, but I stayed mm -hmm. for, um, I think it was about year five 
before I started to think, okay, no, I actually have to make a change. Um, yeah. At that point in time as well, so my husband and I got married shortly after we graduated and um, we had a bit of a hard time, um, both as a couple and I also had a hard time um, adjusting to the different things. So I ended up getting diagnosed with depression and the psychiatrist wanted to diagnose me with anxiety, but at that time I was like so hard in denial that I think he just respected that, mm -hmm. okay, you, you know, if you don't, if you're not ready for this diagnosis, then that's okay. Um, looking back, it was extremely obvious though that I also had anxiety. Um, and um, my husband and I actually separated for quite a, for quite a while. And so there was this combination of um, the depression and anxiety, um, trying to figure out my mental health. And um, part of that diagnosis was, hey, I think you would really benefit from a mindfulness-based uh, mindfulness stress reduction eight-week course. So I figured out how to take one that worked with my working schedule, and I fell in love with mindfulness. And I in a way i think i rediscovered mindfulness because i looking back at my childhood i remember being just listening all the time and watching all the time and just taking everything in like i like taking that class i remembered oh right i used to just be fascinated as a child like when there was a fresh coat of snow on the ground and just stepping in the snow and just being really fascinated by the crunch of the snow underneath the weight of my foot which had the boot on it and the smell of the snow it's a weird thing that happens and how quiet the world can be when it's enveloped in snow and how can we listen to the things that are happening around us the um, one of my favorite, my two favorite sounds of summer are the sounds of the cicadas and um, birch trees. Birch trees have a very specific, um, <laughs> the leaves when they, when they flow, when they flow through, it's, um, it's a very, very specific sound. So those, those are my two favorite sounds. And I sort of remembered that, oh, right, as a kid, I used to just listen. As a kid, I used to just watch. and it was the uh what's the phrase it was a um the phrase isn't coming to me but it was like the reset button i guess it, it was one of one of many 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 reset buttons that i that i needed to just say like oh wow okay yes there's a different way of being it's not just what other people deem as successful what I feel like I should do because this is what other people and this is what society this is what different communities this is what different people say um it was so it was a, it was a really important part of that shift then I think and that was the but you know before then with my diagnosis um i understood something was wrong but with mindfulness it was the first kind of okay this is sort of a direction that i want to go um and at that point music still hadn't um i i was i was in a choir when i was in my um computer science um field but other than that choir um once i graduated from high school it was like okay you know like that was fun music. It's time to put you away now. You were a good, you were a good yeah. um, companion. And I realized that, you know what, I can't lock myself away from this part of myself. Like music is a core part of who I am. Um, my mom actually told me a funny story um, a few months ago that about when I was little and um, like, I'm not sure how little I was, like one or two or something. And I would be sitting in front of the TV and like watching Sesame Street. And I was bopping along with the beat of the music. And she had asked my, uh, I mean, like, I'm not sure how old, how old I was. Like, it was like, it, it, I was young. I, I was very, very young. And she had asked her sister, um, my aunt, you know, like, is that like, 
is that normal? And my aunt was like, no, not at that, not at that age to be able to like, you know, like, like, yes, you can like move, but like specifically to the beat of the music, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a part of who I am. Um, and I went into, I went into therapy and I started to meditate. I did some soul searching and slowly I started to remember, oh, right. Music, music, music. I, I love music. And, um, through therapy, I did a, um, one of those career personality tests and physical, you know, physiotherapy and occupational therapy were in there. Um, it was a kind of an older test. So music therapy wasn't in there, but my therapist said, you know, like, like I, she acknowledged that, like, you know, like it's, it's an older test, but I think because music is a part for you, I said, she, you know, she thought, I think music therapy might be this thing. And I was like, what is music therapy? That, <laughs> that sounds too good to be true. What? Like, <laughs> um, and, um, so I, I explored it. I looked into it. I'm so sorry. This is so long. My goodness. It's just rambling stuff. <laughs> um so i looked into it and i reached out to um the program coordinator of the uh, master's program at wilfrid laurier university because laurier um i was in pickering toronto so laurier was the closest school um we chatted for a bit and she said you know what if you're really interested about music therapy why don't you go to a uh why, why don't you come to the canadian association of music therapists conference because it's happening in kitchener this year like just just a fluke like i had no idea yeah. that it that this was a conference that traveled all around canada so like just how lucky it was that that year it happened to be not only in ontario but like within you know like a couple hours drive from me i thought okay i have to do this and prior to the, prior to doing that i thought okay so backtracking a bit <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought, okay, I knew that I was done at my programming job, but I thought, okay, I just need to do another programming job. And mm. I tried, so I tried to make myself, you know, um, and, and, and I did make myself um, apply to different programming jobs, applying with different, I thought, okay, maybe it's just websites that I don't want to do because with websites, you're working for so many months on something. And then when it finally gets released into the world, um, you, you know, like I had access to the analytics so I could see how many people were clicking and going through the different parts of the website, but it wasn't the same thing as that direct feedback of like, wow, Christina, thank you so much for doing this. This was really helpful. I got that sense occasionally when I would take on little side projects and when little parts of the website would be released for the people that were in my, um, that were in my office. Um, but those hits. And I, I, I say that term affectionately, like it was it was a dopamine hit. Um, those mm. hits were very few and far between. So I thought, OK, maybe it's just not like maybe it's not websites that I want to do. Maybe it's something else. But um, the programming, it felt like seeing the job descriptions and what I would need to do, it filled me with dread. And I thought, oh, I can't mm. like this is I, I, I didn't even have the words to to, to think I can't do this yet. I, I, I just like, I had this, these feelings in my body that I hadn't figured out how to listen to at that point in time yet, but they were there and they were real. And I was putting myself through much more stress, which resulted in more depression and more anxiety. Um, so, uh, I went, I went to the networking events to try to meet people and I felt like such a fraud. Um, uh, you know, in no small part because it's a very, very male dominated field. So I mm -hmm. felt like I had to put on an extra effort to prove my worth, to prove that, yes, I am a woman, but yes, I am actually a really smart woman. I'm a technical woman. I understand these crazy buzzwords that you're talking about <laughs> um, and putting myself forward. And there was this sense of just inauthenticity that I had that made those networking events really hard. And I, and so the cycles continue of, oh, a networking event looks like people dressing up in suits and you meet with a person and you judge how important that person is. And 
Um, you judge, you know, like, is this a person that I want to work with based on how well they just performed for me? And if they are so worthy, then you can ask, hey, do you have a business card? And then you can trade business cards. And then if you're lucky, maybe a month or a year from now, you might get a call. But mostly those business cards are going to go in the garbage. <laughs> Nobody is going to remember because everybody's collected so many business cards throughout the night. So those events were hard. And mm. So when the music therapy conference came around, I was excited and terrified. And at that point, imposter syndrome was so real. And there was, um, I, I had kind of an epiphany of, okay, I am going to this conference because I am curious about music therapy, because I want to learn more. I literally knew nothing and I wanted to learn more. And so I thought, all right, I can own that. Like I, you know, like nobody will expect me to be knowledgeable in any way, shape or form. Like I'm interested and I am going to own that. I know nothing. I'm going to own that. I'm that I'm like, that I'm here to learn. And people, when I told people that at the conference, people were like, wow, that is so brave of you. And I was like, is that brave? I don't know. I thought it was brave <laughs> to go to the networking conferences when I felt like I should know everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I and I went and the opening keynote speaker, I wish I could remember who I should have taken notes down. I should have taken notes down. <laughs> but the opening keynote speaker was um, she was talking about musicking, the idea of music as a verb. And it was with um, um, with women in prisons. And I mm. was blown away and i remember the the fr the new friends that i had made um you know they were they were sitting with me at the table and they saw how my starstruck jaw dropped face and they were like oh that's it she's hooked <laughs> <laughs> she's in we got her exactly like there's there's no escape now she's in <laughs> and i fell in love and um and i i i i was obsessed and so i was so my you know I started to learn about all the different things about aphasia and NMT and and TIMP and the different techniques and uh, GIM and learning all these different things um, before I before I went to school for it, which I feel like is a pretty cool experience now. Um, back at home my husband and i were still going through a hard time so um ultimately it was at that point after that um we made the decision to separate um i had tried to go into the masters of music therapy program at laurier um but the feedback that i got at that point was well you only have one intro to psychology course um and you have no music courses um so really what you should do is you should try to take those courses um, and then apply back. I think that things have changed at that time uh, or have changed between then and now, because from chatting with other people, um, they said that they didn't need to have that background to come in. But at that time, that was the feedback that I got. So I thought, well, I could just spend years and years slowly amassing the courses that I need for the master's, or I could just get another bachelor's degree. And mm -hmm. There's still some times when I think, why did I get two bachelors? I really need, I like a master's would have would have been more efficient, but I also don't regret it because I was very lucky to be able to go through the new community music bachelor's program that had happened. Mm. Um, I was in the second cohort, so things were still extremely new. Things were still very much changing based on our feedback. But in my interview. Um, you know, the one of the questions that I was asked was why community music and not um, the, the, the common year, the common, the classical stream. And I said, well, you know, for one, I only ever got up to my grade seven RCM piano. I thought I still hadn't hit that standard. I have I have mm. a thing with standards. I guess that's my programming brain is if you don't hit the standard, then like that's it. You're you're out. Um, but I've learned how to be a little bit more um self-advocating um but anyway so at that time it was like well i only got up to rcm but also i don't want to perform in front of people i want to play music together with people mm. and that 
to me felt like community music and it, and it, and it is. And I am so grateful to have had the social justice um, focus that was in that program as well. It deeply impacted who I am and how I want to be as a person and as well as as a professional. Um, it also gave me some, you know, a good, a good amount of confidence in my improvisation skills. You know, like I can just noodle and focus on tuning into what the other person is playing and doing and being how the other person is. And I can play off of that. And I'm so glad that I did that. Um, so yeah, I guess that was my really long sort of <laughs> journey from, yeah, that from computers to music therapy. Oh, and then of course, when COVID hit, oh, isn't that fun? <laughs> I never, fun. oh, so much fun, so much fun. Um, just like music is a core part of me, I think that the techie stuff is also a core part of who I am. And so I was the resident, if, you know, before, before COVID, you know, if there was a, you know, the professor was, you know, standing at the front of the class and like, oh, you know, like, okay, let's watch this YouTube video. Hmm, why is the sound not working? So I was kind of the resident, can you like click on this little button in the bottom right corner and click on the little head, you know, <laughs> the little yeah. speakerphone and then, you know, like check, you know, like check to see, is it going to this thing or that other thing? So I was, I was like the, the resident, you know, tech solver thing for my professors and I, I had, um, I love doing that. And so when COVID hit, I actually, um, um, I put together um, a little video that I shared with my classmates for like, okay, for Zoom, here is how you can switch the different settings, you know, like check to see if your original sound is off or on so that we can like to make sure that the, that the, when you're playing music, because we had to do, oh, isn't it so fun to do clinical improvisation over Zoom? <laughs> I'm making a face for the listeners. I'm a face. <laughs> it was a very funny face. I liked it a lot. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> so um, I, I, I wanted very much to help out my classmates and to figure out. Um, and I, and I, I, you know, I jumped head first into, okay, like we're on Zoom. How can we, how can we do this? Um, and it was also, um, um, so because of that, because of my because of my knowledge there, from there, I was able to um, um, reach out actually and volunteer with the Music Therapy Association of Ontario because um, they were also impacted by the move to online. And so I reached out and I said, hey, you know, like I think I could help get the Zoom things figured out for the. I think at that time it was. I can't remember they do we do we do two conferences every year there's one that's devoted to student internship um and supervisors as well as the annual conference so i think it was the student internship supervisor um conference at that time that was in october and i reached out and i helped get the you know get just all the zoom settings set up and organizing breakout rooms and figuring out all of that jazz and um yeah, I uh, have lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how lucky all those people were to have you in like in their arsenal, for lack of a better phrase, to have and not only like to know you exist and reach out to you, but to have someone come to them and say, I have a skill set in this. Do you want help? Because at that time, every single person was going, I want help. <laughs> I don't know who to ask or where to go, but I need help. Like I, it's the blind leading the blind here. So <laughs> I mean, although the timing may not have been ideal in your training, in some ways, I think it was like that so serendipitous that you got to help so many people um, just because of something crazy that happened and affected us all. So thank you for, oh. for everything you did, like being so <laughs> new to the profession and just like giving what you have to offer um, and helping the rest of us feel less intimidated, I'm sure. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you for that. I, I do, I do, I do love getting praised I do love getting recognition <laughs> so and they you know they they were um people were and are and continue to be um I'm you know because because of my regular volunteering with the MTAO I'm a board member now with them and um congratulations thank you thank you um and we um we we launched we launched a new a new website recently and that was um 
there, there was many, many hours on my end of, um, of talking with the, with the web development team that we had hired. And um, the, I, it's, it's easy to kind of, when you're in the technical role to just like, kind of like dig in and be in the background. And, um, but I do hear that appreciation and that recognition. Um, and I appreciate the appreciation. I'm, I'm also <laughs> going to take a hot take for a sec and you can take this or leave it, but, okay. uh, the United States organizations that shall remain unnamed need some definite help with their web development. <laughs> So if you are someone you know, maybe a good fit for that. Um, yeah. Mm. <laughs> In my humble opinion, having used said websites on many occasions and <laughs> received several a headache. <laughs> okay, I will. I will look into it. That is one of those things that. Oh yeah, that's actually a good point. That uh, <laughs> the aesthetic. Yeah, but it's it's yeah. it's a skill set that like we as music therapists I, and. I say this is the, the people who took the regular track record and I have no understanding of computers, people like me, right? <laughs> we're, we're here to help the profession in different ways, but we need people like you to do the things that we're not strong at. Like, you know, we all work together. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, any other tech-based music therapists, reach out to me and I'll put you in contact with someone because these websites need to get fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I love it. And it's it's one of those like, I, I as as much as 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 glad as I am that the MTAO now has a wonderful updated refreshed oh goodness it needed to be refreshed I'm also glad that I wasn't the one that was doing that really hard technical work I'm glad that I could I'm glad that I could be the liaison between and speak both languages I really I really love that I grew up oh that was another thing I forgot to mention I grew up in a bilingual home my um, my maternal grandmother. Um, had lived with us since I was two and um, I'm Greek from both sides of my family and so I grew up although I don't know Greek beyond a few standard words um, I grew up listening to it and so I like I, I, I and I was able to figure out what was being said um, a lot of the time without really fully being able to speak it so I there's this theme, there's this recurring theme in my life of being able to speak both languages and understand both languages and communicate between the two and I like, I really like the idea that maybe I could be that for the music therapy profession that I can speak tech and music therapy and what are the different, how can we, how can we blend those two? It's one of those things that um, at the very beginning of my career, like I'm, I'm doing clinical work part-time and I'm very glad and grateful to be doing clinical work part-time, but also just like I couldn't cut music off from my life, like I want to be able to use my technical skills, my computer science skills to be able to help people and how, how can that look like? So it's it's a big, it's it's a huge, it's a huge world that is untapped and there's so much potential. There's so much potential. I remember yeah. I remember when I was looking um when I went before I went to the CAMT conference, I went to a couple of music and health um conferences in different varieties. And I remember there being so one of them was at U of T. Um, University of Toronto and I remember talking to people and at that point I I think I was I can't remember when specifically at this point it was I think at that point I was like I knew I wanted to go into music therapy um, and so I, 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 I was I was bit by the bug I guess as it were um, and I was talking to a couple of people and one of the person one of the people that I had talked to said yeah this music therapy thing it seems pretty cool but the problem is that they just don't have the ability to show the numbers to back themselves up. Mm. And that was a kind of a formulating moment for me. Like, you know, looking like now I have better language to be, oh, he was looking more for quantitative research rather than just qualitative. Mm. But isn't it so interesting how there's a huge subset of people subset. Wow. I am a technical person. There's a huge subset of people <laughs> that um, it doesn't matter how many stories you share. It doesn't matter. Um, you, you know, th there, there are certain people that are not receiving on the feelings or emotions based channels. 
they are only set to receive on the numbers channels and on the graphs channels on the quote unquote facts because facts inter facts interpreted and displayed as numbers and pictures is somehow more valid than the facts that is shared by people and from others lived experiences there's the social justice element that's coming back into my head again for that and it's i'm torn i feel like we're in we, we live in this world we are humans we are souls on this planet on this earth and we've been gifted for one reason or another with the ability to do both we're not just numbers we're not just programs we're not just algorithms and yes as much as we are feelings-based people as much as we are intuitive souls and beings absolutely we have that but it's not done without intention it's not done without the experience and without the science that we have backing us up we have we have our you know we have our scans we have the work done from previous psychologists to prove that hey music is working on a psychological level it actually it's not just about the quote unquote superficial um entertainment or relaxation purposes they're actually is being changes done in the brain um i i like the idea that it's that these changes are being done on a cellular level i'm still a little bit skeptical on the cellular level i want it to be true I, i'm still a little hesitant to go all in to some some days i'm very new agey and some days i'm like whoa hang on <laughs> do you um subscribe to string theory I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what string theory is? I actually, is? okay. I am such a bad science person. I actually don't know what string theory is other than it's, it's, it's mentioned. It's been a long time since I've like updated myself on the research on string theory. Okay. The, the idea is like there's atoms, there's molecules, right? Uh, but even smaller and smaller and smaller, everything's vibrating strings. Oh, wait, wait. And we Everything's vibrating strings? Everything is vibrating strings, even like even smaller than the atoms. Like you just keep going down and at that tiny 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 point you will see just vibrating strings right oh this vibration so we as musicians know if i play an e chord or an e the, like the low e string on my guitar the high e string will will vibrate if yes. it's in tune so if everything on the planet in the universe is vibrating strings and therefore our vibrations are imp impacting the vibrations of others oh right? so okay so for anyone listening like this is science and new age i think like <laughs> they are they are overlapping but even we you know you do that with the tuning fork you do that with you know a snare drum starts vibrating when you're playing music in a band drum like we we can see this happening so oh my I've gosh at a cellular level like um if, if even if my like intention for the day is I'm going to make music and I want it to help people, that's the vibration I'm putting out. So any music that is hitting other people, that's what they're getting is the vibration of I'm putting out this music to help you, whatever that means for you. Yeah. Um, okay. Which is like, maybe there's numbers out there for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I took, so I, re I recently took a, um, a, a, a singing bowl training course and I, yes. you know, again, it's like, it's one of those, oh, I love singing bowls. I love, I love the court singing bowls. Oh my goodness gracious. I wish I had the money to be able to afford a whole. <laughs> they're not oh, cheap. oh no, they're not. Um, that's, that's one of those, I'm going to save money and build up to it. But, um, but yeah, like the the idea of okay, like the, yeah, because there 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 is numbers that goes along with this. Like I remember, you know, like learning, and I remember the epiphany that I had when I was in elementary school and learning theory that like, oh wait, hang on, every interval, you know, uh, like every interval interval and its opposite will always add up to nine. <laughs> you know, a seventh and a second, you add those, you, like the like they 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 add up to a nine, like like it's all numbers. It's mm. like, there's, there's patterns, there's patterns everywhere. There's patterns everywhere in nature. We've got, oh my gosh, I, I am having this thing where like, I just have a lot of like fragmented thoughts and I'm not even able to like <laughs> put sentences to them, but like, yeah, I, oh my gosh. Okay. Thinking about string theory, I thought, well, why, 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 why is it vibrating strings and not vibrating 
tangles of things but then but then no it makes sense because like yes if, if you have like a tangled ball of yarn that also is strings even if it's tangled so that makes sense oh my gosh oh my gosh well, I... <laughs> if we think about um like overtones yes right? so we have two notes that are in harmony and then suddenly more notes exist that we did not create they just are the vibrations that are happening um yes. And different overtones create different shaped waves. Like some of them are boxy, some of them are crusty, some of them are pointy. Like, you know, there's so much there that yes. um, that we could we could tap into more as far as like the cellular impact of music. But what we were saying before, just like the physiological impact that we can very clearly see and study in the brain, in the body, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system. You know, even if we don't want to take people's word um about emotions and their feelings or even if that doesn't resonate with um certain people who want different kinds of research like mm -hmm. we're, we're covering as many bases as we can there's still so much more to do and there's like you said there's this social justice element that's really imperative and we're having that conversation more but yeah it's there like the the, the research and the facts are there it's just us being able to pinpoint and explain them yes and explain it in different languages explain it in the language that the person listening is 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 speaking and understands um i remember i remember that actually i was talking i was talking to i was talking to somebody um to, to a music therapist that i i can't really call her a mentor but like i look up to her um and and she had said that you know like we were talking about psychotherapy versus um you know like more of the more of the um, oh my gosh, my, my words are failing, but like, you know, like how do, how do you, you know, like talk to people about like spirituality, I think was the topic and, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, is it God, is it the universe? Is it just, um, my own picture of this ideal self that I want to work towards? And she said, you know, it's all the same. It's just what language are people using? And mm -hmm. as therapists, we have to do that, right? We have to tune into what language is the person using that I'm talking to and reflect and validate by repeating that language back to them. I really do think that we all are a lot more similar than we are dissimilar. And it comes down to semantics a lot of the time and we get caught up in the semantics, but absolutely it is, it is I, think, I, think, I think most of the time we all want similar things. We're all wanting to get better. We're all wanting to improve. We're all wanting to, um move forward and to grow and whatever language that is <laughs> mm. yeah this is making me think of uh something you mentioned earlier and this might be another hot take so i don't say this to offend anyone you mentioned before you were in a primarily male dominated field and we know music therapy is a primarily female dominated field mm -hmm. and i'm wondering if that desire for quantitative research is more of a male masculine sought aspect and if we as music therapists um tend possibly to seek or provide more qualitative research if, if that is a more feminine female type prospect i it does make sense i for the podcasters i have the giantest grin on my face right now because <laughs> i'm thinking like yeah that checks out that makes sense there you know the 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 social dichotomy of masculine and feminine comes mm -hmm. to mind and that you know like the 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 imagery that we have that men are logical and women are emotional that men are logistical and women are the care are in the caregiving role and because of that we're supposed to be more tuned into feelings and that's another that's another thing where some days um and today is one of those days um i like i i'm like ah oh, i i hate that this is a thing you know men also have emotions and it actually is a really difficult um it, it's a problem that we're that we're not able to that we don't that it's a problem that feeling and expressing emotions has been um assigned to the feminine mm. spirit to the feminine gender and genders and that masculine is more of the just get things done and buckle down um 
and you know like prove you know prove your worth to me there there's a, there's a sense of machoism there you know prove yourself like prove you know prove that you are worthy give of my numbers. attention give me the numbers yeah. give me yeah. give me this stuff like <laughs> cuz if you don't have it then i'm not going to listen um i i there is a pattern there is a pattern and how much how much of that is um some people will say that there's biological instincts at play some people will say that it's social um mm -hmm. i think that there is probably a bit of both that's 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 a hot take i know i know that people i know that there's a lot of people that will say like no it's it's all social and i'm like well mm, i my brain says yes and to everything yeah exactly yes, it's true and something else is true and the two things can be opposite exactly. yes exactly I love I love me some John Green and one of my favorite John Green quotes is the truth resists simplicity. I it's like we live in such a complicated place and on planet and galaxy and universe and everything is just not like we're we as humans are trying to apply constructs and ideas to language to make it make sense in our brains but i really do think that there is more going on than we can possibly understand oh there was um my my husband and i when we were dating we were watching the reboot of battlestar galactica as it was airing and um oh my god what was his name this is horrible i should i should be <laughs> But that the so that Battlestar Galactica is um the the re, the reboot for the listeners is like um kind of like there's there's this takes place in space there's humans but there's also these um robot sort of um synthetic life forms called Cylons and um Cavill I think was his name there was this one scene where this where the Cylon was talking and venting to the other Cylons about how he used to have this really amazing synthetic body, but now he's stuck in this human body. And he's talking about, have you ever seen a star explode? You know, like with the, like with the, um, like, you know, the different, the different light spectrums and energy. And he had, and he got to experience it, but it was just the worst possible thing because he was reduced to this human, body and literally the the words gelatinous orbs like just that delivery of it was so great and i was like oh my gosh yes like i mean okay first of all like i do not mean to be like um diminishing the wonder that is the human body because holy crap this is cool like <laughs> it is a complicated thing and yet also there are limitations there. There are limitations in our bodies. Like dogs can hear things that we cannot hear. There, you know, we're, I, I, there's, and because there's limitations, we have to translate and we have to kind of fiddle and muddle our own way through to make certain things make sense. And um, I think that there's a lot of things that never will make sense to us um, that we can kind of, we, and isn't it wonderful that we can kind of think about theories and think about what ifs and you know like what if what if this and what if that wow i did not expect to get spiritual on this podcast this is great this is fantastic <laughs> you've pulled me out of the spiritual closet here we are <laughs> yay i love it maybe that's a secret <laughs> i i one of the things and i i, I want i want to say this because this is one of those things i want to say on the podcast before i forget um i long to have soul to soul connections and mm. i feel like music therapy music in some way is a way to do that um because yes. sometimes words do not suffice sometimes body language does not suffice sometimes like i am very much not a good artist so like um physical artist so sometimes that doesn't suffice and sometimes you know like music like we can just strip everything away and meet each other as souls in this in this space on this planet just we are we are like we are these entities we are these beings and i love that and that recently actually was kind of 
flipped on its head for me a bit of like the idea of, okay, yes, we are not like, yes, we are. I, I like the idea of we are souls inhabiting bodies. And yet also our bodies are such an integral part of this journey. It's, you know, like when I was looking back and, you know, like when I was sharing, like I like trying to make myself apply to those computer science jobs and my body was telling me, no, my body is also part of this journey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> my body is also part of this journey. And oh, like just like how complicated is this that we have our brains and we have our souls and we have our bodies and they're all interconnected in a tangled ball of yarn and where does one end and another begin? And I don't know. I, 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 wa I want to get more into the somatic experience. I want to experience that more. I want to learn more about it so that I can give back to that too. That's, that's another part that I want to learn and grow. <laughs> mm. I, even though there's so much craziness going on in the world, I am grateful that we're here at this time where somatics is becoming and sensory needs are becoming like more common language. And I too have experienced like work situations or opportunities where my brain said, yes, this is it. This is awesome. And my body contracted. Mm. My body was like, no way. Um, and old me would have been like, no, no body. It, you're just worried that it's new and scary, right? So being able to learn that about yourself and then we get to help other people know that that's okay too. And to like, help them experience that in a safe way so that when they're experiencing it in their everyday life they can recognize it instead of constantly pushing it down and pushing it away absolutely oh my gosh wouldn't society wouldn't our world look so different if everybody was able to well w willing to i mean first of all you can't be able to if you're not willing to but if everybody was mm -hmm. willing to listen to themselves and if everybody was um accepting and encouraging other people to listen to their bodies instead of um i guess right yeah there's there's a segue back into the computer science field that there that there is that sense to just push through it you know like just just take on this extra responsibility just work harder just work overtime because like this is what you're expected to do this is like you know like you know like this is the logical thing. Why wouldn't you want to do this? And like, oh, your body is getting in the way. Well, suck it up, you know, chug some more coffee, get some more, get some more stimulants, drown, like have some more alcohol, drown out the things that your body is saying, because it's just getting in the way. Because really, you know, like once you get to the end of this pathway somewhere in there then you're going to be happy don't listen to what your body is telling you now that doesn't know like it's only concerned about the present moment it's not going to be concerned mm -hmm. in the future and oh. that brings us back to this idea of success and what is success and what am i doing with my life and who's saying i should and shouldn't do it and so i'm just going to say this for i get emails or dms or whatever fairly frequently of people who are not music therapists, but they have found the show. Mm. And they're like, what is this music therapy thing? I want to learn more. I think I'm interested. Um, and I'm really, really grateful that you shared your story for anyone else who listened to this episode and was like, I've thought about making that shift, but I, for whatever reason, have not, right? You know, I'm trying to stay on this success path. I'm scared to make a change. I'm not listening to my body. I don't believe music is a viable career. Like whatever it is, I... So many people are going to need to hear your story. I thoroughly, thoroughly believe that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I the right people will find it. So I'm grateful that you shared. You shared all of it. You shared those bits, and you're like, this this was hard, and this was challenging, and this is what I felt, and this is what I did anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. People need to hear that. Thank you. Yeah, it, it it is it is hard, and it's scary, and you know, there are still days that I question, why did I do this? Because I, you know, I, me too. <laughs> why, 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 why didn't I just stay in computer science? Well, you know, like why, like I should, I, I went through a very strong, very tumultuous period of this would be just so much easier if I just wanted to do computer science stuff full time. I should want to do this. I should want to do this. And then recognizing that, you know what, like should according to who? 
<laughs> like that word should that word should i love the phrase stop shooting all over yourself i continually catch myself shooting all over myself and i am getting a bit better at it and like meditation i think yeah you know like it's it's not you know like i, I don't think that it's reasonable to um to expect to stop shooting all over myself i think that i think it's the idea is to just watch when that happens and question it and um dig deep and then figure out what that what wisdom comes from that um i had a thought and it's gone <laughs> all the time. All the time. Uh, yeah. i should mention um for any for any people that are you said should ah! <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to mess up your, your thought there because I want you to say what you wanted to say but oh my goodness thank you for that's great oh wow wow now say what you're gonna say okay I'll, I'll not interrupt okay okay This podcast is sponsored by the Music Therapy Podcast Collective, also known as MTPC, where you can find a variety of CMTE opportunities in the form of pod courses. All of MTPC's pod courses are built on a listen, learn, apply model, where you start by listening to some assigned podcast episodes, then move into learning with the assistance of a workbook filled with resources for you to start your self-study towards whatever topics are most interesting, inspiring, and applicable to your practice, and then we finish with the apply section, which includes an office hour and a worksheet to determine how you are going to apply your learning to your personal life or professional practice. You can find all the Music Therapy Chronicles pod courses on our website, musictherapychronicles.com, and you can find the entire catalog of pod courses at MTPC's website, mtpodcastcollective.com. Make sure you also get on the MTPC newsletter for 10% off your first pod course purchase. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you got a lot out of it and you're excited to listen to part to next week because we dive even deeper we touch on so many like controversial but shouldn't really be controversial just like very big discussion points within our profession and within just being a helping professional in general and like how music and science and technology and how they all overlap and impact each other and anyway we talk we touch on a lot of topics that you can dive so much deeper into and maybe someday on the show we will but definitely a thought provoker thought provoking one so like i said make sure you're subscribed to the show so you don't miss that episode next week thank you so much for being here and i'll see you in the next one Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation and got a lot out of it. If you're looking for more Music Therapy Chronicles, you can check out our website, musictherapychronicles.com, for more episodes, blog posts, social media links, um, contact information, our self-care community, and our CMTE opportunities in the form of pod courses. Hop on our monthly newsletter if you haven't already and follow us on social media for just staying up to date on what's going on behind the scenes. We are Music Therapy Chronicles on all of the platforms. Please take a moment to leave us a rating and review. They really help the podcast be more visible so more people like you who are looking for this type of content can find it. 
thank you again for taking the time to listen to this week's episode, and I'll see you in the next one.